Peace and Plants family. We're going to do this John right now, root style, real, real natural. We're just going to have a little conversation. I wanted to uh, get on here. My mind was full. My mind was full. Uh, just got off of a nice plant consultation. We did some really, 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 really nice things. Um, the customer walked away very happy, so I'm very happy. But what I want to talk about right now is the importance of tilling your soil. Even inside plants, even indoor plants need to be tilled. What is tilling soil? What does that mean? That means moving your soil around. Usually if you have a farm, if you have plants outside, you'll till the soil around your plant. You'll loosen up that soil, loosen everything up, get those nutrients moving, get the minerals, everything. You'll The decomposed matter, when you till, the decomposed matter from the bottom actually comes to the top and it's just like a natural cycle. It starts to cycle through the entire soil. Very, very important. A lot of plants get root bound because of this. And this is usually your house plants that would get root bound because they are in a what? A pot. So, how do you till soil with your house plants? How is that even possible? You can't take a hoe to your house plants, right? You don't want to bring the shovel in the house, all right? So, what do we do? We naturally, once a month, okay? Once a month, this is recommended to do. This is what I do once a month, is I will take my hands, no gloves, no anything on. If you have your house plants, you should know exactly what is in your soil. So I take my hands, my bare hands, and I will go in the pot, in the soil, and literally like lift the plant and move it all around. Like it's like lipping it all the way around, all the way around, mushing it around, mushing it around, getting it around. Now, sometimes I wanna add uh, components to my soil. I might want it to be lighter. I might want it to be heavier, depending on what kind of plant that I'm dealing with at the time. So that is the perfect time to do it because you are turning your soil. You are staying away from your soil being root bound. You don't have to worry about all of this uh, nonsense with, with a lot of insects coming in your plants because for one, the insects that are coming into your plants have a lot to do with those flying gnats and stuff, have a lot to do with how much water you are using in your soil, okay? But that's another story. Always, always, always till your soil. Always, always moisturize your soil. Massage your soil. Get into it because let me tell you something. When our every plant, every house plant should be in the ground somewhere, somewhere in the world, each and every house plant that we have in a pot in our homes should be in the ground somewhere. And what is in the ground? Worms worms they're like plants best friends i'm telling you they do so many things but right now i want to focus on the aeration that worms give to the soil so that roots can actually breathe and go through why do you think worms are shaped the way they are i mean the great one is not a mistaken one at all so these plants are shaped properly are properly shaped for us to be able to allow the roots to take place, allow the roots to go on and, and everything like that. When you are dealing with your outside plants, your fingers are the worms. Like I said, once a month, this is what you do. You want to aerate your soil. You want to moisturize and massage your soil. It is very imperative. The worms outside allow your soil not to be compact because they're always moving. It's a lot of different microbes, not just worms, but we're just talking about worms right now. All right, so that is the moral of today's story. That's what I really wanted to say right now is talking about the importance of rotating your soil, circulation in your soil, um, tilling your soil. Some people, you, you wouldn't even imagine, have had plants for 30 years, 30 years, and have not once tilled the soil, have not even changed the soil. And a lot of times with that, you'll, you can tell. You can tell people who don't, always change their soil because they actually have um a lot of salt content at the top it's very very white at the top look at this beautiful tree up here this is a beautiful georgia pine right here i feel very calm but this is a very very important thing some people have had their plants for 20 30 40 years and have not 
uh, changed the soil, have not added mixture, have not taken out, have not given the plant exactly what it needs to grow. So these are tools right here to help you. Uh, I mean, this is going to save you a lot of money, a lot of money, because a lot of pests won't like to come when you have aerated soil, when things are not as compact. And also, like I said before, when you do not allow your the water to sit at the bottom of your uh, pot in the saucer, right? There are some plants who would appreciate that. There are some plants, a lot of our carnivorous plants, uh, the Nepenthes is one, um, Dianaea muscipula, that's a uh, Venus flytrap. Our Venus flytraps are, certain plants do like to be, to have their water at the bottom. And they like, look, leave me alone. Just give me some water. I'm gonna chill right here. Don't worry about nothing. Go ahead and fill up the water as I need it filled. So some of those plants, yes, they will do that. Um, but for the most part, when you're dealing with a lot of your tropical plants and uh, like your Dracaenas, your Philodendrons, your Monsteras, uh, you know, you want to aerate your soil. Now, when you have a smaller pot, it's very easy to aerate the soil because if your pot is about this big, if you've got a very small little three inch pot, right? All you do is just squeeze it. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Your, your plant is going to probably turn and, and lock to the side, but what you do is you basically repot it after that with the soil that's already in there. After you aerate your soil, you fluff your soil up. So your soil is a lot, you know, it seems a lot bigger. It seems a lot fluffier, all right? So when you're fluffing it up, you just go ahead and put it back in there and put some soil around it and then that's aerated and that's done. You've done the job, okay? Any questions, any tips, any comments, please drop them down below. Don't feel shy. Go ahead, let us know. Um, make sure to hit those notification bells. Those notification bells are very important. Subscribe to my channel. It helps me to continue doing what I am doing. I love doing what I'm doing and I need to know that you guys do too. All right, peace and plants, much love.